Hey everyone, Irit here with another video sketching in my sketchbook. Today I'm using gray titanium, which is a relatively new color from Daniel Smith. I think I may have also used a little bit of the warm gray that I have in my palette, which is a Sennelier color that is very, very similar to buff titanium. But today I'm mostly using gray titanium in my background or as a background. And I just, I, I was trying to figure out how to use them with a buff titanium. It was a bit of a bust. I tried using it as a mixing color, which is the way that I usually use it. I didn't like what, I, what was happening. So I decided with gray titanium, instead of again mixing it, I would try to kind of build um, uh, an underpainting or first layer or a base coat, whatever you want to call it. I think it's actually a really interesting way of using it. I think it would work really well for kind of a distress, vintagey look in, you know, a travel sketchbook or uh, a cityscape, you know, that, I don't know, like a city on a hot summer day. Um, it has a lot of those dusty gray tones, depending on the city, of course. But um, yeah, and I'll get to the brush in a second. So I thought I would just try something a little bit different and see what happens. I also dropped a little bit of lunar black into the mix there um, just to get some darker values. And yeah, so the brush. The brush is a part of a set that I recently got. It was kind of an impulsive purchase. And while I don't think that it's... Um, overpriced the item it was uh, kind of a big expense but I'll show you this set of brushes it's from Italy it's beautiful and I'll show it to you in my pretty art supplies video that I'm hoping to make but yeah I don't know when that's gonna happen <laughs> so we'll see um, also what I wanted to mention is I wanted to apologize and I promise you this will be the last time that I bring this topic up. You are here hopefully for watercolor playtime and escapism or escapism. Uh, we all need a break and I don't want this to be kind of a whining or a ranting uh, place. So I just want to say you know, my two cents on the topic. I just recently, you know, now and then I get these very rude, sometimes hurtful comments. And the thing is, I, I was just thinking what bothers me. I, I think the best way to deal with it is just to uh, delete the comment and then you can do in YouTube hide user from channel, which means that I won't, I won't see uh, any comments made by that user in the future. I think that's the best deal, the best way to deal with it. But I was also thinking what was so upsetting to me about this, because it's not that um, something that a stranger writes in a very unkind way hurts my feelings. Um, there's, you know, a few people that are close to me, you know, my real friends, my close family that can actually hurt me. So it's not that it's hurting me. What bothers me is that this kind of behavior goes unchecked. Uh, nobody calls people out. And what worries me or makes me think that we should call them out is that, you know, they leave a comment on my channel. I'm a grown up. I'm, you know, not a teenager. I'm not, I don't have a fragile self-esteem or something like that. I'm in a good place mentally and it doesn't bother me. But if they behave that way here, then I'm sure they behave that way somewhere else and someone else could be more vulnerable and, you know, and they can do damage. And that is exactly the, the heart of this matter, because if someone in real life came up to me and spoke to me in that way, I would call them out and I would tell them that it's not a way to talk to people. And, you know, and it's just plain rude and hurtful. And maybe they know it. Maybe they don't. Maybe they think this is like a, a good way to behave. But I think if enough people call them out on it, they might reconsider or they would see that it also hurts them that, you know, just people don't like them or it's just 
a mean way to behave. So I think that's what bothers me because this interaction coming to someone's channel or social media, dropping a toxic or negative remark and then just, you know, going on with your day, la di da, and nobody's telling you that this is wrong, this is not a way to behave. It's just, I don't want these people to hurt other people that might be more uh, vulnerable. So that's the issue for me. That's why it bothers me not to, you know, to just delete it because I'm sure these people spread their negativity and toxicity in other places as well. But I promise you we're done with this. You know, don't worry about me. I'm, I'm here for all of you that enjoy this channel and enjoy my courses and my artwork and all of that. I'm happy with what I do. And as far as I can see, that's the only way to, I have to paint. <laughs> There's just, I'm too obsessed with painting and watercolors. If you hear um, screaming in the background, it's Ella, my daughter playing computer games. So don't worry, nobody's. Uh, hurt here. But yeah, I just wanted to say that and we're done. Let's talk about the painting. So this turned out into something really, um, you can see very kind of raw, sketchy thing going on. I was just trying exploring different things and um, yeah, having fun trying to find uh, interesting colors. I really like these luminous peachy kind of pinky red corally colors and I think they complement well all the grays and the um, um, blacks or gray tones that I have going on so I'm just playing with that I kind of feel my uh, mission for myself my challenge for myself in the next few weeks is to find different shapes and types of florals that I enjoy painting because for now all I feel I'm really really enjoying and kind of found my style of doing them are these round rose-like flowers like you see here basically and I really want to try and find kind of different shapes so that I can create more interesting compositions why are my kids so loud I don't know so I think that's where I'm trying I'm also using a book you'll probably see it or you have seen it in the uh, buff titanium uh, video yeah because I, I haven't recorded the narration for that one yet <laughs> so I'm doing this first um, but yeah it's a really fun book I'm just trying to find some flowers either to illustrate or to figure out how I can paint them with watercolors it's more complicated than I thought so I need to kind of wrap my head around that challenge. I'm also looking forward to Wendy Brightbill's class, which I mentioned in the past. Uh, it's starting next week on the 17th of August. It's called, I want to say all things floral, something like that. I love her florals. I love her artwork. I'm hoping it won't be a lot of oils and like really textured stuff, but I'm always inspired by her color stories. She has the most beautiful color sense. And I'm always, always inspired by the colors that she uses. So even if, you know, I can only use kind of the shapes that she does and her colors as inspiration, uh, I think I'll be uh, pretty happy with that course. There's a lot of screaming going on. I didn't know video games could be so... Um, you know, emotional, <laughs> but it looks like they are. <laughs> okay, so now I'm also kind of exploring something that I've been really enjoying in uh, a couple of these last pages, and that is starting with a very limited color scheme, and then at the end, adding lots of different pops of color, whether with uh, just like brush strokes of like bright saturated colors, or with pencils. Um, I don't know, just exploring that. I really like that. I kind of, when I finish the main elements and it's very almost monochromatic, it doesn't, you know, satisfy me. So I always feel like I have to bring just a little bit more color, a little bit more rainbow <laughs> into the mix. And yeah, here I'm just uh, comparing Bright Rose and Quin Rose, uh, Quinacridone Rose. And also I started thinking if I'm going to include, like to keep all of the colors that I have squeezed onto my palette if I'm going to keep them there for my uh, autumn 
palette. I thought about maybe just starting a new palette or moving to another palette, but I love this one so much, so I don't want to do that. Yeah, just adding more color. Oh, also, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of my new Fabriano sketchbooks, and I think I will start prepping the pages a little bit for my Italy trip. I have very high hopes for that trip, <laughs> sketching and painting wise, and I'm pretty sure it's all going to um, be very disappointing. <laughs> but yeah, I'm hoping that I will get some uh, painting done there. Um, just, you know, get into the habit of it and I'll bring some extra sketchbooks and materials for my girls so we can do this all together because I can't imagine that I'll be able to just wander off and paint for an hour or two or half a day or whatever. <laughs> my dream is that in a few years when they're a bit older, we can have, we is me and anyone who wants to join me, we can go to Tuscany or I don't know where, south of France, uh, the beautiful Austrian countryside and explore watercolors together. Here are some close-ups. I really like how this turned out. There's something uh, very sketchy and happy about it. That makes me happy. And yeah, that's it. So I hope you enjoy this video. I'll see you soon in another one. Bye.